Hope Springs 2003. Uh, Colin Firth is uh, depressed due to a breakup, and um, that sounds like a great premise, honestly, to start out with. Colin Firth, that's basically all you need is, is Colin Firth. Uh, the fact that he's depressed is just an added bonus. Uh, where it goes awry is that Colin's depression is treated comically by the filmmaker, but then seriously by the other characters. So that's just kind of a, I found that to be a weird pairing, maybe just because uh, the filmmakers aren't funny. Uh, not, I mean, treating depression with humor is great, but they're just not good at doing that. Uh, you're sort of, you know, wondering if Colin will have the inner fortitude that it takes to uh, resist therapy and be a man, which is, again, a great thing to start out with, but in the execution, um, turns out to be uh, depressing, you know. The, if he was really going to deal with his depression, of course, he would spend all of his time learning about, you know, sort of esoteric history, ancient empires, angelology, that sort of thing, uh, lifting weights, that, that's real therapy, but nevertheless, uh, this, this movie is about sort of man's struggle with the feminine world and, and with women, so, you know, therapy, yoga, drinking entire bottles of alcohol in your car, um, the, where the movie really goes wrong is with the uh, female protagonist, the love interest, She's supposed to be this manic pixie dream girl slash alcoholic. Um, you might have a boring job, but but she has all these you know quirks that really make her personality come alive. And her quirks include things like giggling, um, taking off her clothes, and trying to seduce Colin Firth. Uh, I don't that that I think is about the extent of how quirky she is, even though she's you know, sort of cast in this quirky light. But I think that none of those things really separate her from basically any other woman. Uh, and the way that it's executed couldn't possibly be more annoying. Uh, so, so it makes me wonder, what is the essence of an annoying person? Uh, presumably someone who is the opposite of Colin Firth, uh, who, especially in this film, is mild-mannered, heartbroken, artistic, She's supposed to be the wild American who's going to bring some fire into his life. Uh, and it makes sense that they would be attracted to each other. You know, you got the whole opposites thing going on. Uh, they are apparently infectiously amorous in this film. But her character, the way that she's actually conveyed, scene by scene, you know, line of dialogue by line of dialogue, is just so pointless, just so annoying. She has no history, she has no hang-ups, uh, she has no reason for anything, she's just there. Um, and maybe that's why she's so annoying, because she has, you know, so much energy, but no, like, reason or purpose for existing. There's nothing, like, meaningful about her or anything that she does or says. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean that it's great to be low energy, um, it, you know. Only someone like Colin Firth can pull off being low energy but still attractive. Uh, but but if you are going to be high energy, uh, you have to have some principle for your animation. Why are you so animated? Why are you so uh, bubbly? There's got to be there's got to be a reason for the bubbliness, or else you're just annoying. Is my theory. Um, in a story with so few characters, there's like five characters in this movie. You would expect that having such a small cast would allow the filmmakers to, to really spend time, you know, delving deep into these characters and, you know, developing the sophisticated interrelationships between them. But uh, that's not what happens here. Um, they don't even make to, they don't even bother to make the female lead like a full human being. And then the other female lead, uh, Vera, is just so bitter and annoying that she just neutralizes all the drama inherent uh, to the situation that she and Colin Firth are in. Plus, she's Mini Driver, who I just can't stand anyway, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's just bad all around. The, dr the whole drama that this movie is supposed to be revolving around doesn't work uh, because 
the storytellers don't put in any of the work to make you really feel that Colin is like weighed down by his ex. They, they don't uh, do any of the work to make you show why he's so attached to her other than just telling you that he is. Um, they, they don't do enough of the work to even show that he really is, you know, liberated by this new American girl other than the fact that they're, you know, like having sex a lot or whatever. You're just, just told that they have these dynamics over and over. You're never really shown, you never really feel it. Um, there are a few great moments, um, you know, like the, the Christian in the pool scene, genius moment, uh, the <laughs> moment where Colin Firth is in a towel, uh, and twirling his scarf, uh, that, that sort of burned into your brain forever after watching it. Uh, the, the line, you know, I'm experiencing an atavistic urge to carry you when he, you know, sweeps the woman off her feet. That's also great. Uh, it's just like two or three moments that were fun in a whole movie that just almost doesn't exist. It's so vacuous. Uh, this movie is so airy that it's barely there. And it's like you go to bed with Colin Firth and then you wake up hugging a puddle of mist. That's what this movie feels like. So I feel betrayed, and I think that anyone who bothered to watch this movie would feel betrayed. Thank you.